Get ready for a tale about an ancient ruler like no other. When we think of prehistoric creatures, we usually imagine massive and ferocious beasts like the saber-toothed tiger, Tyrannosaurus rex, and Dunkleistus, which dominated the food chain during their time. But have you ever heard of the earliest, most fierce predator in the animal kingdom? Let's take a journey back to the Cambrian period, over 500 million years ago. The Cambrian period is famous for the explosion of life that occurred during that time. Prior to this period, life on Earth was mostly sedentary, but suddenly, animals that could move freely appeared, marking a significant shift in the evolution of life. However, these creatures were still in the early stages of development and didn't quite know what they were going to look like. As a result, the Cambrian creatures looked incredibly bizarre and strange, with fossil records showcasing an array of peculiar animal forms. This made it difficult for paleontologists to decipher what they were looking at, so the earliest reconstructions of Cambrian animals were purely based on imagination and fossils. One such creature that left paleontologists stumped was a fossil that looked like a shrimp. Without any other clues, they decided to add a shrimp head to the creature and named it an Amalacaris, which means strange shrimp. However, as time passed, paleontologists realized that this shrimp was, in fact, the claw of the most dominant predator in the Cambrian period. Take a look at this creature and you'll realize it doesn't look like any shrimp you've ever seen before. Despite this, the name stuck. And paleontologists continued to call it Anomalocarus. Anomalocarus may not have looked very intimidating compared to other prehistoric rulers, but this creature was the top predator during its time. In a world where life was still developing, Anomalocarus was already the apex predator and significantly more advanced than other animals of its era. Although it might not have been a fearsome monster, it was still an impressive and powerful creature that left a significant mark on the history of the animal kingdom. Let's take a closer look at some of the other creatures that lived during the Cambrian period. Take this one, for example. It's just a strip of meat with shells attached to its head and butt, and no one knows what those shells were for. Then there's this one. A meat tube with no head or brain, aimlessly drifting through the water. And how about this one with long legs? Compared to these weaker and smaller creatures, doesn't Anomalocarus seem like a more effective predator? Now let's compare their sizes. During the Cambrian period, the largest animals were only around 10 centimeters long, smaller than the palm of your hand. How big was Anomalocarus? It was roughly the size of a dog. Compared to other small animals in the Cambrian period, Anomalocarus was a giant. Anomalocarus dominated the ocean during the Cambrian period, not only because of its size, but also because of its advanced weaponry. Its confusing claw was the most advanced weapon of its time. In addition, Anomalocarus had numerous fin-like appendages that gave it a huge speed advantage. However, Anomalocarus's most powerful weapon was actually its eyes. Here's a little-known fact that's often overlooked. Today, all animals, whether birds, mammals, or insects, have eyes. However, over 500 million years ago, only a few animals had them. Imagine how threatening Anomalocarus was to other animals during the Cambrian period. Faced with such a gigantic monster, prehistoric creatures had to come up with many strategies for self-defense. When it comes to self-protection, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Yes, running away. But during that era, few animals were faster than Anomalocarus. After all, the size difference was significant. For example, even the fastest ant can't run faster than a human. So most animals during the Cambrian period used armor to protect themselves, just like modern-day clams, crabs, and turtles. You might be able to find me, but you can't break through my tough shell. As a result, many animals during the Cambrian period evolved to have thick, heavy armor for protection. 
Although these ancient prehistoric creatures may seem strange to us, we can still understand how terrifying the Anomalocaris was from their armored shells. However, even armor has its limits. For example, the trilobites we are familiar with often have bite or claw marks from Anomalocaris in their fossils. Therefore, some animals develop defense mechanisms such as burrowing, camouflage, or producing toxins. However, in my opinion, the most creative defense mechanism is making oneself unappetizing. Take the creature in this image, for example. It made itself emaciated and bony, without much flesh. As a result, no animal had an appetite for it, solving the problem at the source. It's truly a brilliant strategy. During the Cambrian period, while shaping the entire world, Anomalocarids were also shaping themselves. By 510 million years ago, Anomalocarids had diversified into a multitude of species, much like the sharks and whales of today, occupying many ecological niches. Some of them even stood at the top of the food chain, such as the carnivorous Canadian Anomalocarid and the Amplectobellua sembrachiata found in the Changjian biota. These creatures were the leviathans and megalodons of their time. However, just like today, the largest animals in the oceans during the Cambrian period were often filter feeders, such as the blue whales and whale sharks. The largest animals in the Cambrian oceans were also some filter feeding anomalocarids, such as Egerocassus, which could grow to be as big as an adult human and had its iconic large claws evolved into filter feeding screens to capture planktonic organisms. Egerocassus and its close relatives, the Herdiids, had a shrimp-like appearance with a head shield similar to modern shrimp. There were also some more peculiar anomalocarids, such as Parapytoia. These creatures were very strange in that they couldn't swim and could only crawl along the seafloor. Their claws evolved into a pair of small knives used to cut up the corpses of dead animals that had sunk to the seafloor. They fed on rotting flesh and were the scavengers of their time, much like hyenas and vultures. However, the most extraordinary anomalocarid was the Opabinia regulus. As we mentioned earlier, anomalocarids typically have a pair of adorable large eyes, but Opabinia regulus had five big eyes. Moreover, Opabinia regulus had no claws, but instead only a long, protruding mouth. Paleontologists suggest that this long mouth helped the creature to catch small insects hiding in the mud at the bottom of the ocean. During the Cambrian period, these anomalocarids collectively led the bizarre and amazing ancient world, driving the rapid evolution of animals. These kings of the Cambrian period ruled the world's oceans for over 60 million years. But no king can rule forever. Under the dictatorship of Anomalocarus, other animals began to develop hard structures that could serve both as shields for defense and as weapons for attack. Among the numerous small creatures that lived in fear of Anomalocarus, there was a relatively inconspicuous one called Cotamirus, which looked a bit like a small spider. Its descendants, by a chance of fate, would rise up to challenge Anomalocarus. About 480 million years ago, the descendants of Cotamirus evolved into a new class of animals called the Eurypterids, also known as the sea scorpions. The sturdy exoskeleton of the sea scorpions not only provided excellent defense, but also formed a critical organ, the exoskeleton. When the exoskeleton and muscles combined, the animal's strength instantly reached an unprecedented level, a level of strength that Anomalocarus could not match. The Anomalocarus, the rulers of the oceans for over 60 million years, appeared to still thrive in the fossil record in the Zagora River Valley formation of Morocco. Their size even exceeded that of their ancestors from the Cambrian period. However, keen scientists have discovered that the predatory anomalocarids have long since disappeared, leaving mostly filter-feeding ones struggling for survival. It is clear that they have fallen from the top of the food chain. Even their gigantic size was likely their last effort to survive in their dire situation. But size cannot make up for their primitive evolution.
and they were gradually going extinct over time, as evidenced by the ancient oceans we would see if we were to travel back 500 million years. As anomalocarids declined, a new generation of animals, such as the eurypterids, or sea scorpions, and crinoids, flourished. Ultimately, anomalocarids were completely driven out of the rich shallow waters they once inhabited and forced into the impoverished deep sea. Like many other strange animals from the Cambrian period, they disappeared from the fossil record. Scientists used to think that anomalocarids disappeared in history like other primitive animals under the suppression of the new animal rulers. But, they were wrong. Anomalocarids did not disappear from history. Bundenbach, on the banks of the Rhine River in Germany, is a picturesque area and a mecca for fossil hunters worldwide. Countless fossil hunters visit this place every year to find their dream treasures. Despite the numerous exquisite fossils found here, they all became insignificant in front of the miraculous fossil unearthed in 2009. Paleontologists still remember the shock this strange fossil brought them. This fossil was strange because the creature in it had no similarity with any other species living in the same period. After careful study, paleontologists were amazed to find that the creature in the fossil was an anomalocarid, one that looked quite peculiar. There was a gap of 100 million years in its evolution between this peculiar anomalocarid and its known ancestor. It was like a messenger sent by the Cambrian Ocean over millions of years to tell us about the tragic extinction of anomalocarids. The proud anomalocarid still retained its iconic claws, big eyes, and circular mouth, indicating that it still primarily fed on meat. However, compared with its ancient ancestors, this anomalocarid from 400 million years ago was only as big as your palm. It was apparent that after losing its status as the ruler of the seas, anomalocarids had become what they once hunted, prey. To avoid the new marine overlord, the anomalocarid's body underwent a profound transformation. In addition to the existing head shield, the body of the anomalocarid was covered in an armor like a true shrimp. Even at the end of its body, a long, sharp spike grew. Much like that of a shrimp or a eurypterid. When it couldn't escape, and the armor couldn't protect it, this spike was its last line of defense. What's more, this anomalocarid grew fish-like tails and large fins, making it seem like a combination of various animals, like an anomalocarid. A shrimp, and even a fish. Yes, even at the end of its rope, the creator did not abandon this once marine overlord. After this anomalocarid, humans have not discovered any new fossils of it. The anomalocarid fossil buried deep along the banks of the Rhine seems to indicate the end of an era. The anomalocarid has disappeared completely from the river of history. Today, humans can send probes deep into the ocean, a dark and unfamiliar territory, which is a veritable museum of living fossils. People there have discovered countless animals that were once thought to have been extinct. I have always wondered if there might still be surviving descendants of the anomalocarid in some unknown and mysterious corner of the deep sea. Perhaps someday, we will get a glimpse of the ancient mysteries of 500 million years ago. Thank you for watching. In the next video, I will introduce another group of fascinating creatures, echinoderms.